I'm Luke. And I'm Anna. We are your hosts today. This, this video, video is an introduction to electronic devices. We love snap circuits. They are a fun way to learn useful knowledge. This video is based on Elenco Electronics Sound Plus 200 kit. Let's get started! Project number four of the kit is titled Playback and Record. The circuit comprises a battery holder, a microphone, a speaker, two switches, a transistor, an integrated circuit for recording a brief message and playing it back, a resistor for your limiting current, and a few snap wires. The batteries will deliver to the circuit a total electrical potential of 3 times 1.5 volts, or 4.5 volts. How the battery holder and the snap wires work is covered in video T001 and will not be discussed here. This video is on aspects of microphones, speakers, NPN transistors, and a recording IC. We'll use these components to make a circuit that does something useful and we'll analyze the circuit. Building the circuit is easy. Just follow the diagram. Innovative aspects of this video include our explanations, figures, and measurements. There are six parts to what follows, plus a summary. A microphone is an electronic device that converts a sound to a current, an audible signal to an electrical signal. The electrical signal can be sent to a speaker or it can be stored. Connect the positive pole of the Elenco IC to the correct pin of the recording IC. Some el electronic components must be connected with the direction of the electrical current flow in mind. Let's measure the resistance of the mic and make some comparisons. The measurements can be made with my dad's Ecus Innova Volt Ohm Meter, or VOM. You can get a decent VOM from Walmart for under $15. Here, let's keep things simple. We'll go into more depth on the VOM in another video. The photo shows the measured resistance of the mic is about 1,200 ohms, or 1.2 kilo ohms. You don't need to know this to build the recording IC or to get it to work, but it is interesting and the knowledge will be useful in other projects. A speaker is an electronic device that converts a current to a sound, an electrical signal to an audible signal, the opposite of a microphone. The electrical signal can be live, as when the signal comes from a microphone or it can be recorded as when the signal comes from an audio file. Here, one terminal of the speaker is connected via a transistor to the output of the recording device. The other terminal is connected to electrical supply in. Yes, but an other terminal could be connected to the electrical supply out in a different circuit. Let's stick with what we have for now. Right. We need to get the output signal from the recording IC over to the speaker, and the speaker must be connected to the electrical supply. But the speaker could be connected to the positive pole of the battery holder, the negative pole, or neither. What matters is adequate electrical supply. The back of the Elenco speaker says its impedance is 32 ohms or so. This is a measure of the resistance to the flow of the current. The measured resistance is close to the expected value and almost 40 times smaller than the resistance of the mic. The maximum power output of the speaker is about one half watts. Power output equals the current times itself times the resistance. So the current that will give the loudest sound from the speaker will be about one eighth amps. The recording IC has seven pins. By coincidence, seven is the number of bright stars in several familiar constellations, including the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper, which are found near the celestial pole in the Northern Hemisphere. Hey, you're changing the topic. You're right. Let's talk about astronomy in a different video. Two pins are for electrical supply, one for input and one for output. 
These pins will be connected to the battery holder. Two pins are for switches, a recording switch and a playback switch. These pins will be connected to the battery holder. In today's circuit, they are connected to the negative pole. We'll connect the slide switch to the record pin and the press switch to the playback pin. When a switch goes on, electrical current through the IC will trigger recording or playback. The machinery used to record and playback messages is stored inside the recording IC. This video does not discuss details of the machinery. Two pins are for a microphone, one for input and one for output. Here, the electrical supply to the recording IC will be enough for the mic to work as needed. The voltage across the microphone pins of the IC will be less than 4.5 volts because the batteries are the only energy in the source in the circuit and they have a total potential of 4.5 volts. The last pin is for the output signal of a recording stored on the IC. This pin will be connected to a speaker. An IC will not give the desired results without proper connections to proper devices. The recording IC is like other ICs. Operation depends on a difference of about 5 volts between the electrical supply input and output, all 4.5 volts of the three batteries. This is why the path from the electrical supply to the IC has the same potential as the positive pole of the battery holder. And the path from the IC to electrical supply has the same potential as the negative pole of the battery holder, or ground. If the electrical supply to the IC is too big, the IC will be ruined. A transistor can act as a switch. It has three poles. A base, a collector, and an emitter. This is an NPN transistor. We talk about what NPN means in a separate video. What we need here is a small current from the base to the emitter. This will give a big current from the collector to the emitter. Of course, the transistor must be in a circuit. The circuit must have proper wiring and the circuit must be connected to an electrical supply. As Anna said, a transistor can act as a switch. Suppose a speaker is wired up to the collector. If the current to the base is big enough, the current from the collector to the emitter will be big. The same current will flow in the speaker, and the sound produced by the speaker can be loud enough to hear. But if the current to the base is too small, the sound will not be loud enough to hear. This diagram shows current flows in the circuit. Red arrows point in the direction of flow. The current to the base of the transistor comes from the output of the recording IC. The current that flows in the speaker, producing sound in our circuit, will also flow through the lamp. The lamp will not light up though. It has a low resistance, about 1.5 ohms, or 20 times smaller than the resistance of the speaker. The voltage difference across the speaker, the transistor, and the lamp must be 4.5 volts. So the voltage difference across the lamp cannot be any larger than its fraction of the resistance of the speaker and the lamp times 4.5 volts, or 0.2 volts. Video T001 showed 3 volts across the 4.5 volt lamp is not nearly as bright as 4.5 volts across the same lamp. So 0 0.2 volts across the 4.5 volt lamp giving no light makes sense. In a separate video, we'll see how to build a recording circuit with an indicator light. Now let's take what we've made and put it to use. We'll record a message, store it in the IC, and play it back from the storage location. Flip the record switch on. Wait for a beep and speak into the microphone. This is just like recording a voicemail message. The maximum recording time is five seconds. After recording, turn the switch off. Play the recorded message by pressing the playback switch. You will hear your recorded message followed by one of the three songs stored in the IC. Watch more of our ice cream videos.
Press the playback switch while a song is playing, causing current to flow through the switch. The music will stop. This IC is designed for a first current pulse to play a recorded sound and a second current pulse to stop playing the recorded message. Build your own circuit and record your own message. Let's summarize today's video. We have used Elenco's recording IC to introduce a basic recording and playback circuit. Sound technicians know a lot about recording and playback devices. There is value in knowing how basic electronic circuits work. Many electrical needs around the home or business can be met without an expert. Often introductory knowledge can save you money. You can avoid accidents by knowing a few basic safety concepts. Snap circuits are toys, but they can help you understand electricity in your home or business. Good electricians can build electrical systems and repair all kinds of electrical devices. Electrical engineers invent new electrical devices. This concludes today's video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. All of us will smile. For more videos like this one, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. See you next time. Bye!